So one of the worst common mistakes I see people make when planning their vacation is not checking the passport or visa requirements before they depart on their trip. It can be devastating to fly halfway around the world, reach your destination, only to discover you don't have the visa required to enter the country. That's why I recommend checking months in advance the passport and visa requirements for your destination. And yes, I did say months, not weeks or days before your trip. And if you find out your destination does require a visa, find out can you get one upon arrival or do you need to get one in advance? Does your destination require a passport to be valid for six months or more before entering their country? Answering these questions early will give you time to renew your passport or apply for the visa you need. Hi, my name is Ben. I'm the owner of Ben Tennis Dream Vacations Travel Agency. And on this channel, I create travel resource and information videos just like this one to help you plan for your next vacation. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So now that I gave you the first worst common mistake, let's move on to the second one, which is arriving for a cruise or tour the day of the parts. Most people do this to either save vacation days or to avoid having to pay for an extra hotel night. But you'll quickly regret that decision if your flight ends up being delayed and you end up missing the departure time for your cruise or tour. If your ship leaves without you, you'll probably have to buy an expensive last minute flight to catch up with the ship at the next port of call. If you miss the start of your tour group, you might have to take a cab or public transportation to catch up with the group. In either case, do you really need the extra stress on the first day of your trip? Why not do yourself a favor and schedule your flight to arrive a day early? And why not give yourself some time to explore the departure city? So moving on to number three, not getting your shots. The one thing you never want to bring home with you from a trip is a potential fatal disease like typhoid or malaria. Fortunately, there are vaccines and medications available to prevent any diseases that are common in other parts of the world. Start by researching your destination on the CDC website. There you'll find a list of recommended vaccines and other general health information. Depending on what you find there, you may want to schedule an appointment at a travel clinic where you can get the vaccines and medications you need to keep you protected. So number four worst common mistake people make when scheduling their vacation is overscheduling. Have you ever come back from a vacation and felt like you needed a vacation from your vacation? Well, if that's you, then you might fall in this category of overscheduling. I realize you might have a limited time to see everything you want to see at your destination, but shouldn't your vacation feel like a vacation and not a forced march from one thing to the next, feeling constantly rust without enough time to savor and reflect on what you're seeing? If that's you, then you might want to try adopting a slow travel approach. And what I mean by that is identifying a small number of attractions and seeing them thoroughly without having to race from one thing to the next. Or you can even try blocking out some free time in your schedule each day and go and see those sites that are most appealing to you. So moving on to number five is booking a tight connecting flight. I know we've all been tempted before when we get on an airline website and we find a cheap flight and we're like, wow, this flight is so cheap. Surely 45 minutes is enough time to make the connecting flight. I mean, why would they even put this on the website if it wasn't feasible, right? Well, actually wrong. Now, every airport is different, but you can find connecting times as tight as 30 minutes. But is it really worth booking a tight connecting flight? I mean, yes, you will save some money, but the odds are really against you in making that connecting flight. You really have to have the perfect conditions in order to pull it off. Think about your previous flights. Think about how long it takes to plane. What are the chances are your connecting gates are close together, especially if you're arriving into a major hub like Atlanta where you might be arriving in the Concourse A, but your connecting flight is all the way in Concourse E. Now, unless you're Usain Bolt, you're probably not making that connecting flight, especially if you only got 30 minutes. And, oh, let's not forget about the weather as well, or even a minor weather event can cause an airline delay and cause you to miss your connecting flight. Not to mention that if you checked a bag, your bag most likely made the connection and is now on its way to the final destination. Meanwhile, you're back at your connecting city, trying to find the next flight out. And hopefully it wasn't the last flight out where you might have to wait until the next day to fly out to your destination. Meanwhile, your bag is back at the final destination, making laps around the carousel. Now, I personally like to give myself at least an hour to connect for domestic flights and at least two hours for international flight connections. So on to number six, which is sacrificing safety in order to save money. There are times when it makes sense to trim expenses on vacation, like getting a hotel or vacation rental that has a kitchen in order to make your own meals instead of eating out. And then there are times where skipping isn't the best idea, especially when it comes to your personal safety. For example, walking back to your hotel room late at night instead of getting a Lyft or Uber, or staying in a sketchy neighborhood just because it's cheaper. Safety comes first, so save the penny pinching for other parts of your trip. And lastly, number seven for 
Worst common mistakes people make when planning a vacation is foregoing travel insurance for expensive international trips. Now, I don't advocate getting travel insurance for every kind of trip, but if you're heading overseas, then it's almost always a good idea to get it. To determine whether or not you need travel insurance, consider the following questions. Have you spent a significant part of your income on non-refundable items such as airfare, rail passes, or trip deposits? Or in other words, money you would lose if your plans should change? Will you be traveling to an area where medical care isn't readily available? Are you traveling where weather could disrupt your trip plans like a trip or a cruise to the Caribbean during hurricane season? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you should seriously consider travel insurance. It'll cost you a few hundred dollars, but it could save you thousands if things go wrong for you. So those were the seven worst common mistakes I typically see people make when planning their vacation. And if you were to happen to book a vacation with me, you can expect that I would plan your trip in a way that would avoid getting you into any of these type of scenarios, which in turn will give you peace of mind and also puts you in a position to have a successful and stress-free trip. If you would like to use me to plan and book your next vacation, you can email me at btennis at dreamvacations.com or you can head to my website, which is linked in the video description below. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all the latest travel information. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.